Aid and weaponry continues to pour into Ukraine as the Russia-Ukraine war continues to drag on. The United States has now said that it will be providing depleted uranium tank ammunition to Ukraine. And the announcement forms a larger military and a humanitarian aid package that amounts to about one billion American dollars. The development overlaps the U.S. State Secretary Anthony Blinken's visit to Kiev. The White House's announcement, which included the controversial depleted uranium as ammunition, has now triggered a very strong response from Moscow, stating that the use of depleted uranium will lead to very sad and very difficult consequences for everyone involved in the war. It's a было уже в истории, в новой истории Европы. Эти снаряды активно применялись в Югославии. Применение этих снарядов получило весьма и весьма печальные последствия, зафиксированные даже международными организациями. But the question is, what is depleted uranium and why is its use a major point of contention? Now remember, depleted uranium is highly effective in piercing armor plate, but their use is extremely controversial. And despite what is said about depleted uranium being not radioactive, the fact is it still continues to remain mildly radioactive. Scientifically, it's a residue after the natural uranium process of enrichment has been carried out. And in simple terms, it is a byproduct from the process which prepares uranium for use in nuclear power plants and nuclear weapons. So let's take a look as to what we know so far about this development. Now the 120 millimeter rounds are for the M1 Abram tanks that are expected to be delivered to Ukraine before the end of this year. Depleted uranium ammunition are extremely controversial due to their association with health problems such as cancer and birth defects in areas where they've been used in the past by the Americans. However, it's not been definitively proven to have caused these issues. The density of depleted uranium, a byproduct of the nuclear enrichment process, helps rounds containing it to punch through heavy armor, making it ideal for use in ammunition that are designed to target tanks. Now, the uproar around the use of this semi-radioactive weapon is not entirely unfounded. The opponents of these weapons, such as the International Coalition to Ban Uranium Weapons, has said that the dust created by these depleted uranium shells is, can actually be breathed in by people, resulting in severe medical issues. The ammunitions which miss their target can in fact poison groundwater and soil. A 2022 UN Environmental Programme report has also revealed concerns on the use of depleted uranium. The study has warned that the use of this weapon can in fact cause skin irritation, kidney failure and also birth defects amongst children who are born even decades after this weapon has in fact been used in war. All right, now to give us more perspective as to why the United States, of course, is sending depleted uranium shells to Ukraine, we're being joined in by Mr. John Irath, who's a senior policy director for the Center for Arms Control and Non-Proliferation in Washington. He's joining us live on this broadcast. Now, Mr. Iran, this, this is a very controversial type of ammunition that the United States is now sending to Ukraine. Depleted uranium, how does it actually change the course of the war? This is not the first time that uh, this question has come up since the beginning of the war in 2022. Uh, this is the second or third shipment of weaponry that will include depleted uranium rounds uh, that are going to Ukraine. Uh, what is different this time is that the, the armor-piercing rounds that are involved are for the Abrams tanks, which are a tremendously effective weapon system. Uh, the Russians have an interest in ensuring that uh, these systems are less effective, and so they would prefer that uh, the tanks are going to Ukraine, that they go without the depleted uranium rounds. So they are raising the health concerns uh, that had previously come up once again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's worth noting that uh, depleted uranium rounds are used by Russia by uh, virtually every modern army. Right. Uh, if there were a war between India and Pakistan, right. the Indian army would be using no, I think I think you are getting uranium. into hypothetical context of who would and would not use. But the fact is, depleted uranium and its use is extremely controversial. 
Now, the United States is helping Ukraine in the war effort, but the question that I'm asking you is this. Is the United States enough crossing a critical threshold level? Because the Russians have made it abundantly clear that they too would resort to the use of these depleted uranium shells if they are used by the Ukrainians, supplied by their Western allies. How does the United States, in fact, justify this kind of an escalation? It's not an escalation. It's not the first time that uh, such weapons have been exported to Ukraine. Uh, they have been used by both sides in the war so far. So the, the uh, uh, idea of escalation at this point is largely propaganda. All right. Now, the Brits have, in fact, spoken about sending these kind of weapons in the month of March. And this is the first time that the Americans are at least publicly admitting that they are sending this kind of weapon. But the fact, Mr. Irath, is that these types of weapons have a history of where they've been used in the wars in Iraq and also in Afghanistan. And according to reports, in, in especially in Iraq, in the places where depleted uranium was used by the Americans, especially in the city of Nasiriyah, you know, there are reports that even to this day, even though it's been at least three decades since they've been used, children are born with birth defects. How do we even justify their use? If the children were born three decades ago, that was prior to any uh, American presence in the region. Uh, the reports that you refer to uh, phrase their findings in uh, words such as may have or could have. Uh, it's uh, largely a series of hypotheticals. Certainly depleted right. uranium as well as any kind of weapon is highly dangerous to the people that it hits mm -hmm. and needs to be used with great caution. Uh, but dangers such as the, the health dangers that you mentioned have not firmly been proved. Right. Something that needs to be taken very seriously and considered very carefully in any decision to use any kind of weapon. Absolutely indeed. And I hope that the decision makers in the United States would, of course, take that very seriously. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. John Irath, for joining us and getting us those insights there. Thank you. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.